Hello, I'm back. I'm sorry I had it in so abruptly, but uh, I can only upload 15 minutes of a recording. So as I get near 15, I have to stop and then do it in the next one. Now, we were talking about the int and how we don't know how it is implemented. Uh, there are so many different ways you can implement the int. Uh, you can put the most significant digit on the front or on the back. Uh, they're called Little Indian and Big Indian. There's methods called two's complement, one's complement, sign an absolute value. We don't care. Just as long as it gets it us what we want, we don't have to worry about it. Now, the books talk about three levels of viewing an ADT. So I'll, I'll, I'll mention those now. Three levels of an ADT. First, we have the application. Application. This is the domain. This is the pot that uh, the users play them with. Uh, it's how we're going to use the data. It's how we will use the data. Then second, uh, we have what's called the logical error. Uh, a level, the logical or abstract level. Uh, this is the uh, place where we have all the methods and everything. Third, we have the implementation. And that's the part that we're not going to show always. Now, what do we need if we're going to do ADTs? Now, we, we will do, we will do ADTs uh, by classes. And uh, we have to, we have several operations we have to be able to do. And you know these. We need to initialize uh, an object. We need to initialize the class. If I were uh, in a hot, in, in School, I'd ask you, what what do you do that? What What is that? How is that done? But we're not in school, so I'll have to tell you. We use a constructor to do this. Now, we have to be able to change to change parts of the of the uh, class uh, of the ADT. We usually do this, we usually use uh, methods that start with set. We also have to to be able to get to un to find the values of pots. Some of the pots of the ADT.
our methods to do this usually start with get I mean uh, uh, yeah get now we also need to be able to sort of if there is a pardon me I if there is a is an array or a list of something in the class we need to be able to uh, go th to go through it to uh, access the parts of the list or array methods to do this are usually called iterators are iterators now in an array the index is it is the iterator in a vector there's a special uh, data type for iterators now, way back in the beginning of this, I used the word, I used the word efficient. What do we mean by that? We have been used to saying, if we can get a program to work, we're doing well. But that isn't enough. There are usually many uh, different ways to solve a problem. Are there better ones? Are some better than the others? The others? That's what we're trying to figure out. Now, in this class, we won't emphasize this much because it's really more a topic that's going to be covered heavily in the algorithms class. The idea is there are two possibilities that we can think about. How fast is it and how much storage does it use? In CS, we are interested in the speed and the space of an algorithm. Sometimes these play against one another. We talk of the of the time space trade-off it may be better to make the algorithm a little um, more time consuming to save space this comes up in um, operating systems where you have to keep track of whether you have assigned a block of memory or not and there can be an awful lot of block memory blocks of memory and to use an entire byte to represent the status of one block is not worth it. Some people use a bit and they put the bits in bytes. Now, that's harder to work with. It takes more time to go through the bits, but it saves a lot of space. So that's, that's one of the things that will, uh, is important to us uh, it probably we probably talk about it more if we, uh, if we were doing both uh, 
data structures and algorithms in one course. That is hard. We used to do that, and it didn't work that well. Now, uh, how should we count? How should we decide? What, what should we do? How do we figure it out? The, the area we are talking about is called complexity. Uh, there are many interesting problems in complexity, but we're not going to go into the uh, theoretical parts of it. We're just going to talk about what we can what we can manage. Uh, what I'll talk, uh, I'll say, for example, uh, consider the uh, algorithm to add two integers. We do one add of the ones digits and for the other columns we add the digits in those columns and then add a carry then add the carry so it takes a uh, two plus two plus one adds to add three digit numbers. Numbers. When we want to know how, how long an algorithm takes, we need some measurement for the input. So uh, we will use the number of digits in the, uh, the numbers we are adding as a measurement of the size of the input. The question is, if we increase the number of digits, what effect does that have on how fast the algorithm runs? Now, we can do, you, know, you can do fancy stuff here and you can come up with all kinds of things. But basically, if we have n digit numbers, we need 2 times n plus 1 adds. The 1 is for the 1 is for the first column and we have 2 for the rest. And that reminds me I wrote that wrong. It's 2 times n plus 1. n minus 1, pardon me. Now, once more, I'm getting up against that time limit. So I'll stop here, and I'll pick this up in, a, uh, in another video very shortly. So long.